So you want to be a professional trader, like the traders in big banks, the ones we see making a lot of money. Well, to do that, would you agree, you need to use the same tools that they are using. Things like market profile that you're about to learn about in this video. I actually think it's one of the best videos you're going to watch on trading tools because market profile is not only used by the best traders in the world, but it's so different to what I see amateur traders using in the retail space. So you're in for a treat and you're trading could be about to turn a corner in a big way. So stick around to the end. Now, before we get into it in just a minute, as always, I wanna make one very quick important point based on my decade plus experience working in some of the top institutions in the world. Now, my advice before we begin is stop looking for single videos that will teach you a method that promises to make you profitable very quickly in just one video. You know those videos that say, my five minute strategy that can change your trading. And it's just one video showing you some method that will apparently turn your trading around. I know it's tempting because hey, who wouldn't wanna make easy money? I do, but you're completely dreaming if you think one video showing you one strategy is going to turn you into the next trading messiah. Not going to happen. What is, however, going to change the trajectory of your trading ambitions dramatically is replicating what the very best proven traders in the world are doing, using tools like Market Profile to represent data in a very methodical format that you can then analyze to make professional and sensible decisions which should lead to long-term consistency as I'm about to show you. Let's go. Okay, everyone, so in front of you, you have the Market Profile. Now, forgive me, I will repeat a few things that I said at the intro of this video, but all of it is important and uh, we've got lots to learn in a very short space of time. Definitely worth sticking around for. I know a lot of this will look complicated, like, oh, what's going on here? I've never seen this before. Maybe you've seen a little bit of it before or none or whatever the case may be. Definitely worth your time. As you can see, completely different to what you might be used to seeing and actually it's going to make your life simpler, all right? So ask yourself, are you serious about trading? Are you serious about being profitable or becoming consistent? One of the things that made um, traders like myself and traders that I worked with in institutions successful was doing things differently to the crowd, right? You've seen what the crowd are doing on most of the videos on um, here, quite, you know, no offense to anyone, but it's all the same old rubbish, basically. And, you know, you're just going to be spinning the wheel, getting nowhere like a hamster. Um, if you actually want to get professional about things, you need to be doing things different from the crowd. That's all I'm saying. And as you can see, this is very different to the crowd, but this is what's actually being used by pretty much every institution, speculative institution that I've worked in. We'll be looking at market profile, volume profile. And the ironic thing is, it's actually very simple to understand. Like I said at the start, impossible to learn the whole of professional trading in one video, but I just wanna whet your appetite and show you that if you put your mind to the right things, um, you can go very, very far in this business. Even if you've never traded before, you're new to it, or you've done all the, what I like to say, the retail junk before, start looking at professional stuff. Let's do it together. I will show you just very briefly that, you know, in previous videos, I talk a lot about order flow tools and I have used them in the trade that I'm going to highlight to you today. Um, I've used the order flow tools that I've mentioned before in previous videos. So normally you're used to seeing a lot of numbers moving around and you can see the market moving here. And the trade, I did obviously take it, you can see it here on the footprint, but I'm not gonna discuss this in this video because I want to show you something slightly different, um, which I think is gonna be very beneficial to your trading if you start learning it in more detail. But you need to start somewhere, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So you can see that there, this is the actual trade I took, um, which you can see here on the footprint, and I'll just quickly show you, just for credibility's sake, because I think it is important, let me just show you this month. So January, 1st of January 23, um, been an exceptional month, but it's this trade here on the 23rd, 1,587.50. Obviously you're used to seeing um, that type of stuff when I show all the order flow and so on, and I'm not gonna be showing that. So I just wanted to show you my blotter that it is this trade here, and we're gonna cover that in the market profile 
um, very briefly. So stick around because this is really going to be um, hugely beneficial towards your trading because it's actually going to make your life simpler. All right. So first thing to understand, market profile, very simple. OK, these are days. OK, so it's actually uh, Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, OK, and so on. OK, uh, this is Thursday, which happens to be today where I haven't traded. But um, anyway, it's this is the week. All right. Forgive my handwriting. Very terrible. This is the week. OK, so really, how are you going to get a representation of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? That simply on one chart, you're not. It's going to be a mess where you're looking at in more of a graphical format in terms of a lot of um, not even indicators, which obviously I'm very anti, but just in terms of price, we're seeing a lot of price over days and days and days. It's going to be very complex for you. So you need to start to break it down. And it's not just me telling you this. This is what institutions are doing. When I was working in institutions is what I was taught to do. And I think it's what's contributed to allowing me to have the sort of consistency that you just saw there. Right. So you saw it here. Very consistent month. Obviously, not always this consistent, but um, this is what's contributed to that. So market profile. Right. Let's break it down very slowly. I'm going to spend only a few minutes on it um, and then expand on it in future videos. But if you think of the marketplace, OK, it doesn't matter um, whether it's in this case, the stock market doesn't matter if it's the currency market or if it's actually a real world market. So we're going to look at, I don't know, just thinking of um, chocolates, right? Chocolate bar, right? So if chocolate bars typically trade at $1, let's say you run a business, a chocolate bar business, all right? And I will relate this to market profile. You see how it's all related in. And actually financial markets are working the same way because they're they're just assets, they're items, they're stock, like a chocolate bar is what? Just an asset, right? Can be bought and sold and has some tangible value to it, right? No different to a stock or a, a unit of currency or so on. Ultimately, use currency to buy it, right? So it's all the same thing. Gets way overcomplicated for no reason in the market. So let's say the chocolate bar is $1 and then we've got a range of prices that it may move to, right? So 110 120, maybe even 130. Um, and then below that, you've got 90 cents. Okay. And then 80 cents and 70 cents. All right. Would you agree if typically it sells at a dollar? Let's just say it's a dollar for argument's sake. If we think of the volume or the number of units that have sold at a dollar, it's going to be quite high, right? And then typically you're going to get less and less people interested or buying it as the price moves up. And then below, same as um, we go below. Yes, there's going to be demand for it, but less retailers are going to be willing to sell it right at that lower price because they're not going to make as much money. So typically what you get is you get like a, a profile like this, OK, where, um, you know, if it's too cheap, let's say the markets uh, or the market chocolate bar market or stock market or whatever it is starts here, okay, it's gonna rapidly move up if it's too cheap, right? And if it's too expensive, obviously, you know, after moving here, it's gonna rapidly move down and settle in this area. Do you see this area is gonna be a very popular price where buyers and sellers are kind of uh, matched with each other. Now, if this is your business, right, and your Amazon or whoever you are, let's say the bulk of your stock You've probably purchased it to sell around. So it's going to be have been bought, you know, less your margin around this area. So that's going to be your typical price. Would you agree if the market starts to move up? Right. Um, and potentially you're making more profit, you're going to also start to purchase more of the product. Right. So you're going to start pushing the price up as much as possible until consumers get to the stage where they're like, oh, it's too expensive. And then they bring it back down. And then similarly, um, on the downside, if the market starts moving down and you've bought all this stock, right, what are you going to start doing? You're going to start selling it very quickly and dumping all that stock, right? So you're going to push the market down until what happens, um, the market naturally starts to 
gravitate back up as consumers start to find it very cheap and they start to demand more of it. So you end up going back to this sort of level here. Okay, and that is all the market is doing all the time is it's continuously moving from this imbalanced state between buyers and sellers, consumers and uh, vendors, you know, or so on, uh, consumers being us and people like Amazon being vendors. And it's always gravitating back to a certain level until something happens where we get this type of move and then it's just sustained because something changes, right? Something changes in the, whether it's infrastructure, whether it's fundamental data in the markets and so on and so forth, all right? So that is typically in a nutshell, uh, market profile, right? So I haven't really talked about the mechanics of it, but in terms of the mechanics, in terms of how price actually forms market profile, the more time price spends in one area, the more kind of bulk you're going to get in a certain area. Okay, so price tends to stay in this area for a long time, which is typically what, which is kind of like the most um, agreeable price for buyers and sellers, then it's going to stay in that price. It's stay in that price range and build some bulk on your chart, right? So now this may, why I'm saying this is may actually making your life simple is because you don't see this information on a plain price chart, right? So this kind of information on a price chart might be in the most extreme example, just a price chart that looks like that. Do you see it's, it's so linear, you're not going to be able to glean, oh, at $1, that's where the kind of bulk of trading has taken place. It's gonna be very, very difficult for you to glean that. Now, the reality is you will get, obviously, if there's hardly any tra uh, trading taking place in one area, the market's gonna move very quickly. If there's a lot of trading taking place in a particular area, you are gonna get the market stick around that area for quite a while, and that's why the market profile will start to build. Volume profile is highly accurate, but I just find market profile a little bit more flexible in the sense that I can actually break it up. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean. You see, I can split it apart, which is a little bit more advanced, but it means I can split it up. I just find it a little bit easier to using that versus actual volume profile. But anyway, so if the market is sticking around for a little while, the problem is, might do that in other regions. But do you see, it's very hard to tell kind of visually, okay, where was the market? Where are we likely to see a lot of demand if we break out of a certain area? Is it is it this bulk? Am I waiting for this area? before I break out? Do I deem that to be really a breakout of where the market has settled? You see, this is, it's very, very difficult using a price graph. And then that's just one day. Imagine trying to figure this out over, you know, as I said, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you just, you're gonna run out of space and it's gonna be a disaster. And then on top of that, you've got these people using these indicators, you've got these supply and, silly zones things going on and I don't know what on earth off. And I know this isn't a popular, I know people find this hard to swallow because it's something they may have been looking at for a very long time, but it's not stuff I was ever looking at in institutions. So I'm gonna be honest with you. Stuff like a Fibonacci level here or here or 38, completely meaningless, okay? It's so arbitrary and random, you may as well, I haven't got a dice in front of me, but you may as well just roll a dice, okay? You're wasting your time. Look at, analysis, hard analysis, data, which is what institutions are doing. I talked about it before, and we will talk about looking at this chocolate bar market in terms of the stock market and how I actually made money, as I showed you before I took some trades. But what I really want, I want you to start thinking outside the box because you're not encouraged to do that enough in a lot of the videos I see here. And again, I'm not picking on anyone. I'm not going to single out one person who's made a video here. I, I don't care. I'm just talking about the general retail um, education, trading education industry scene. Doesn't get you to think hard enough and therefore you're never going to develop edge. You're not going to develop edge. You are not going to make money. Okay. It's not. Forget it. It's not going to happen. You know, it's like going to a job and just expecting some everything to be automated or indicators to do the job for you. They're not going to do that. Institutions realize that. Institutions realize this is difficult, but we can make our life easier. We need to analyze some data. Let's represent the data to ourselves, you know, rather than just 
lines everywhere on a chart as in price. Let's actually break it down into something more palatable here and actually see, okay, what, what is going on here? Okay, I can see the bulk of prices here. Okay, it'd be very interesting if we start to move away from here. You know, as I said before, where if you've got the chocolate bar market, as mar the price starts to move up, if you're a retailer, Amazon, whoever, you're going to be making more profits. You're going to suddenly start pushing the price up, buying as much as possible so you can generate more profits for yourself, right? So same thing as you start moving up. People who've bought here, they're going to have an interest in pushing the market up because they're going to be making more profit. And even when the market comes back, as I said, it starts to get more expensive and consumers take their foot off the gas in terms of demand. As soon as it comes back here, we're going to see the market being pushed up again, right? Amazon, whoever it is, because they think, hang on, we were able to sell it up here. If we come back, I'm going to buy some more stock and push it up. And that is why the market moves up like that, where you say, you know, a low, high, um, higher lows and higher highs and all of that. That's actually what is happening. It's the mechanism, okay? It's not a trend line or any of this rubbish that I see people using or some fib here. Or, that's got nothing to do with why the market moves up. It's moving up because buyers are holding stock in a certain area. Market profile helps us to identify that. So hopefully you found that piece of information useful. I'm going to now show you how I actually utilize that um, in terms of the trade and then we'll be done. Okay, so this is actually showing you how I find areas of interest, right? So generally you're looking to see, is the market settled? You know, I said it before in the chocolate bar market, is it settled here? Um, I think it was $1, wasn't it? And are we continuing to trade here and buyers are just kind of there and sellers are just kind of there as in, you know, uh, vendors and retailers as in consumers are there happy? Or is the market having some sort of shift? Is it having some sort of shift? Okay, so here you can see on Tuesday and Wednesday, and even to some extent today, we've seen the market kind of just happy in this area. So if price goes up, you're obviously going to want to bring it back. If price goes down, you're obviously going to want to bring it back. If price goes up, you want to bring it back. Now, the day that I actually traded, I'm going to show you, was this, this day here, Monday, right? And at the open, it wasn't like that. And you see it was actually this scenario where you've got, say you've got the chocolate bar market at $1. Suddenly, demand starts to rise out of this area where every vendor's been used to selling chocolates, right? They start to rise. And what happens then? They're making more profits. They're going to start pushing the market up, right? Vendors are going to start pushing the market up. And obviously demand is coming in at the same time. To identify that, we need a mechanism, right? That isn't just looking at plain, even price. I hear about people saying, oh, I love naked price action. And, you know, to be fair, there is some, at least you've got rid of all that junk that is on top of that. And you're making your life a little bit easier, but it's still random, right? It's just, what is that? It's just price going up and down. It's it's really meaningless. I'm going to be honest with you. You may as well, this naked price action, you may as well go outside naked, right? It's pretty not going to serve you much purpose. You need to break this data down. It's a good step in the right direction into this format. So we can actually see here on Friday, so the day before I took the trade, okay, the day before I took the trade, let me just squeeze this up a little bit because there was a lot of trade on the day before. The majority of the trade was here, okay? You see that? That's kind of where the bulk of stock was purchased. Kind of the chocolate bar market doing business at $1. And then we just came out of that area. The next day, on the Monday, okay? So that's where it opened. This A period is called an A period. Basically, A, B, C, D being the first, the first letter, so the first half an hour, basically, we opened there. So can you see, structurally, there's been a shift to where the bulk of trading took place on the Friday. So obviously, I can see straight away there's a lot of demand. And I'm actually, just finally, before we finish and wrap up, I'm just going to mark um, this area. Okay, it's called a value area. 
I'm not going to get into that today. It's basically the edge of where the bulk of business was done. Okay, so we've marked that area. Would you agree? And I'm going to show you that exact area where I actually traded. Okay, so you can see the area there. So it's exactly there. So you'll see if I move it here, you see it moves at the same time. So it was actually 3964, wasn't it? That area there. Do you see it? It's that area there, just above um, where the bulk of trading took place the previous day. You can see it yourself here on a price chart. Very, how am I going to pick that spot out? You know, where is that? This is all just very arbitrary, right? So obviously by looking at things in a more constructive format here, almost like a business would, right? Amazon's looking at their data like this. They have data analysts, that's what they're doing. We're not just looking at every single price randomly, which is what a price chart is of where they've sold goods and services. They're looking at concentrations and then seeing, okay, what's demand doing relative to where we have done a lot of our business, right? Where stock is being held. Are we making money? Are we losing money? Do we need to take action, inaction and so on? Okay, so here, markets moved up are great. We need to take action, right? We need to buy some more so we can make more money because there's a lot of demand here. Right, and I've recognized that here in exactly the same way, right? So I can see that relative to this area where that demand was that we're actually moving out of it and therefore I'm also gonna be buying. Using things like order flow, uh, which you can see here. Okay, so obviously this is more micro execution. So it's kind of a three pronged process, right? It's Understanding your market, doing the research, what's actually going on in the marketplace, and then executing on it. All right, so something to think about completely, completely different to what I see in the marketplace. And really, that is honestly what you probably won't be surprised to see the level of consistency thinking about the market in that way can bring. So please, 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 whatever you do, whether you do this or something else, do things differently to the crowd because that's the only way you're going to be successful in this business. So hopefully you found that useful. The best way to continue learning about institutional tools is to continue watching more videos on order flow such as this. See you next time.